Good morning, and welcome to Lesson 10 in our study of the book of Colossians. This is the last lesson for this book. And while we're thinking of it, it's important to remember how it all came about. Paul being a prisoner in Rome, writing this letter to the Church of Colossae, even though he himself had never been there. It's important to understand how Paul himself had been a changed man. He had gone from being a wealthy, uh, influential, and important member of the Pharisees to being a missionary, a prisoner, someone without much means, as he, as he was after he was converted on the road to Damascus and became a minister for Christ. He became the author of much of the New Testament. Paul did not do this all by himself. He was a person who was a people person. He developed a lot of friendships. And in this last part of the chapter four of Colossians, we're going to see some of the friends that Paul made and how they varied and how they are representative of the friends we all make today in many ways. I'm going to go over the characterizations that Dr. Jeremiah does in his, in his study in the book of Colossians, just for clarity. So, what we're going to do is look at some of these friends that Paul made along the way and how they helped and supported him in many ways. So the first person we met is one, one called Tachias. He called a beloved brother, a faithful minister, fellow servant in the Lord, he was going to, he, Tychias was going to tell you all the news about him, Paul, and I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts, because if you recall, the church of Colossae was going through this stress where men, people were coming in ministering under the form of Gnosticism and saying that Christ was not who he said he was and that he was not sufficient for salvation which is the reason for Paul writing this letter in the first place. So he was going to send this brother, this Tachias, a beloved brother, a faithful friend. And this was someone who Paul obviously came to depend upon. He was called the dependable friend. And it is such that he probably sent this message by Tachias to the church at Colossae. And he probably also delivered Paul's letter to the Ephesians. This was no small feat, considering that the church at Colossae was about 1,200 miles from Rome, where Paul was imprisoned, and Ephesus was only about 1,000 miles from Rome. So this was a great arduous journey to be entrusted with these letters, and Tychias was felt to be a dependable person who could be trusted with these letters. And it says, I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that he may know your circumstances, what you're going through, and comfort your hearts, give support and comfort to the church at Colossae. And he's also saying, he was doing this with us, an, as, Nisimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, who is one from Colossae. Now, Nisimus, the story of this man, is primarily in the book of Philemon. Anisimus was a slave under the mastership of Philemon, a slave who ran away and ran away to Rome, a great distance, as I just said. And he met up there with Paul, who talked to him and converted him into Christianity. And now he was talking about Philemon taking him back more as a brother than as, a, as another slave. So Anisimus was one of these people that Paul converted and then was sending back to his former master, Philemon, more as a brother. He called him his son, actually, because they had become so close. Anisimus, the story is in primarily in Philemon. But he's saying that this was someone that Paul felt was a new friend. He was a friend that was new in the faith and new to Paul, and that Paul was enamored of him, so much so that he called him his son. Anisimus went back to Philemon, made arrangements for his freedom, 
and it is said that he eventually became a bishop in the church at Ephesus, this former slave. So here we have another person, another characteristic altogether, this new Christian, this new friend of Paul, who later became high up in the church in Ephesus. So he was sending this man back, Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who was one of you. And he said, these two will make known to you all things which there are happening in Rome, happening here. So he was depending on this, these two people to relay all that was happening to Paul in Rome back to the church at Colossae. Then he says, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greet you. Aristarchus was another person who was a friend of Paul's, who was also apparently a prisoner in Rome, also a prisoner of Christ. He was a person who had been with Paul quite a bit. And when the extended ministry in Ephesus broke out, a riot broke out during that time in the Temple of Diana, Aristarchus was actually in the forefront and was one who was in the midst of it as he defended or as he was a friend of Paul's. He was also with Paul and returned to Rome as a prisoner. He was now a prisoner in Rome. And he continued in many ways to be with Paul during his trips through Jerusalem and, as I said, to Rome again. Uh, Aristarchus was with Paul all this time. He was a very loyal person, a loyal friend. And now he says, Aristarchus, a fellow prisoner, greets you. With Mark, a cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions, if he comes to you, welcome him. Now Mark was also, this John Mark, or Mark, was also a fellow uh, friend of Paul, so who went with him on one of his mission trips, but he became discouraged. He became discouraged and went on the wrong way and decided to leave Paul and went back because the going apparently got tough. And for a while, Paul and Mark were estranged. And Mark was not invited on any more mission trips for quite a while, but this, was, this ended up in a reconciliation. And now he is saying that he was a cousin of Barnabas. He is recommending the church of Colossae to, re to receive him warmly. If he comes to you, welcome him. Mark became a devoted Christian again and came back into helping and supporting the faith. And he is also known today as the author of the book of Mark in the Gospels. Then there was Jesus who was called Justice. Justice is the Greek name. Jesus, the Gener the uh, 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 Israeli name. Uh, these are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are off, the, are off the circumcision. So Mark and this man called Jesus were the only Jewish people who were actually traveling or he or who uh, Paul is mentioning in this section. They're the only Jewish people. The rest were all Gentiles. And they were supportive of, of Paul during this. He was just, we know very little about this man called Justice or Jesus. He was just a quiet friend who was a comfort, who was in the background, who was a comfort to Mark and a comfort to Paul. And they just, he just was a person who was there to support, to be a comfort to him and to be there when he was needed. And this is the type of friend we all need, a loyal friend, a quiet friend, someone who is just there in the background when, when he's needed. So these are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are off the circumcision. They have proved to be a comfort to me. Friendship is important. It says in Proverbs that as, for, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of a friend. And this is what these people were doing, Paul to them and they to Paul. It also says in Proverbs 18, there's a friend who 
strips closer who turns closer than a brother. This is also what these people relate to Paul. So these were some of the people that Paul worked with, ministered with, and some of the people he depended on during his days as a minister. Now we get to a person called Aristarchus, or not Aristarchus, pardon me, Epaphras, who was one of you, a member of the Church of Colossae, a bondservant of Christ, greets you always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. This, this is the person who we met in the very first chapter of Colossians, who went to Paul with the, with the report that there was a problem in the church of Colossae because of these people preaching Gnosticism coming into the church and trying to change the characteristics and the worship of the church, of the people in that church. And he came to, he came to Paul to try to get some advice and some help for the church. And now Paul is saying, Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers. And he is saying he, he, had a, he was a praying all the time. He prayed faithfully all the time. He was always praying. Always praying, and not just praying, but he was laboring in prayer. He was wrestling in prayer. He was, he was more than just praying. He was praying fervently in prayers. This is, this is sort of corresponding in language to the book in Genesis when Jacob wrestled with God. This is the type of thing it was. It was a prayer that was that was stringent. It was heart, heartfelt. It was it was marked with fervent, fervent, uh, fervently. So he is saying that he greets you always, laboring fervently for you in prayers, and he was also laboring for you that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. This is what he was praying for, is that the church in Colossae would bear fullness and completeness with the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you, and those who are in Laodicea and in those in Hierapolis. So, this person was probably a founder, to some degree, of the church in Colossae. There's also evidence he was part of the founding, found, the, the founding uh, people. He was one of the founding people for the church in Laodicea and in Hierapolis, which were only about 12 to 15 miles away from the church in Colossae. So, he was a prayer warrior. He prayed purposefully. He prayed faithfully, he prayed fiercely, he prayed fervently, and he prayed for the actual benefit of what, the, what he wanted this church to be, complete and perfect in all the will of God. Then Paul goes on to say, Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and Nymphus and the church that is in his house. And Nymphus we don't know very much about. But we do know that he was a person who was hospitable. He was called the hospitable friend. He was called the hospitable friend. And he had this church in his house, which apparently was large enough to support a, a goodly number of people. And he said, when this epistle is read among you, see that it is read also in the church of the Laodiceans and that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. So what happened was this writing that Paul was giving to the church of Colossae, they wanted it also read in the brother churches of Laodicea. There apparently was also an epistle of some sort written to the church in Laodicea, which we do no longer, which we no longer have. We do not have this epistle, it's not in the canon. It apparently has been lost. But there was an epistle written to the church in Laodicea, which was to be written 
read in the church in Colossae as well. So these writings would be would be spread around each to a number of churches and therefore the word would get around much more than it would otherwise have had. So this Nymphus was a hospitable friend. He was a person who hosted the church and he hosted, hosted the gatherings in his house. And then he said, Luke, the beloved physician. Luke was a physician, an educated person. He was a Gentile who became a close friend of Paul's and traveled with Paul to some degree. It, was, it would be something to have your own physician work with you all the time. And this was what Paul was thankful for, that Luke was there with him. Physicians in those days were held in high esteem. And Luke was one of those people who became Christian at an early time, one of the earliest Gentile Christians. And he was also, as well as being a physician, he was an author. He wrote the book of Luke and the book of Acts. So he was a close friend of Paul's. And it says at the end, when Paul was in his last days, when Paul was dying, he said, only Luke is with me. He was apparently the last person to be with Paul. And this is in 2 Timothy 4, 1. Only Luke is with him. So Luke was a very close friend, as well as a physician and an author, who traveled with Paul through some of his journeys. And this is recorded in the book of Acts. Then there's Demas, preacher. Demas was, was a friend who actually was a, a, someone who left Paul, and who was difficult. He left Paul. He was with Paul at the very first, but he left Paul. And it is said that he actually went back in 2 Timothy uh, 4, verse 10. It says, Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world and has departed for Thess Thessalonica. The Demas is like many people today who start off in the faith, start off in the ministry, start off in the faith, and get discouraged, get disillusioned, and somehow the draw of the world is much greater than the draw of Christ, and he leaves and goes back to the ministry, or goes back to the, the world, worldly way that he had before. So, although he was with Paul as a friend, as a close friend initially, he did leave Paul and went back to Thessalonica. So this is called a difficult friend. He was a friend who Paul wished to have with him, but who was no longer there. And then we have Archippus. Archippus, if you read the book of Philemon, this man, Archippus, was in the book of Philemon, and probably was in the church that was in Philemon's house. He may have been a son of Philemon as well. But he also was becoming discouraged. He was becoming disillusioned to some degree, even though he had a ministry of his own. So he was a discouraged friend. He was considered someone who had what he needed to do, and he had the way of doing it, but he was becoming discouraged in the ministry and in his life. And this is why he says, Paul says to him, and say to Archippus, Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received of the Lord, that you may fulfill it, that you may carry it through to the end. Don't be discouraged. Don't get disillusioned. Take heed of what the Lord gave you, that you may fulfill it. So these were some of Paul's friends that helped him, that were with him, some who stayed with him, some who were in prison with him, some who wrote some of the books of the Bible, some who left him, some who became discouraged and left. So there is a gamut of people, much as you meet today, and much as you walk along with today. And then he says, this salutation by my own hand, Paul, remember my chains, grace be with you, amen. And so we leave the book of Colossians after having seen Paul's imploration to the church to accept Christ. 
having given them a description and understanding of who Christ really is, what Christ really can do, of having told us how we should act and live and behave towards one another as Christians, and giving examples of how some of the people who worked with him, helped him, dealt with him, and how he dealt with these people. They didn't all last, but then in life that rarely happens. So we end the book of Colossians on this note. I have to admit that I used a great deal of the information for this series from Dr. Jeremiah's study system, study system on the book of Colossians. I also used uh, sections from Phil Collins's book, Straight to the Heart of Galatians to Colossians. And I used parts of the Blue Letter Bible and some of the commentaries in Bible Hub. Anyway, this ends the book of Colossians and the study of Colossians. I hope you get something out of it. Thanks for watching. We will probably, our next study probably may start next week at the introduction anyway to the book of Daniel. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. This is the end of Colossians, so bye for now.